we're ready to really get organization going. And what has to happen with that is there's some other things that need to go on. So first, I'm just gonna welcome everybody. I see some new faces today. Uh, every week, every time, every month, we get some more new faces, and that's good. We have Winona and Beersford has formed together now for their block club, and uh, had a very awesome good meeting. And I'll let him tell you about that um, uh, on last week. And one that I was running around everywhere, trying to be at every place, every time. Uh, but it was a good meeting. They got to ask some me some questions. If you have your block club meetings and you want me to be there, please reach out to me at least a week in advance. They, they schedule my calendar sort of like a week, week and a half in advance or something like that so that I can get it on the calendar. And, uh, you know, because other than that, I'll have to run around and just drop by and keep going because I probably got something else. As you know, the mayor works 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. And so sometimes on the weekends, every day, I have an event or have something going on. Um, so that's the welcome. I appreciate you guys taking your, out of your busy schedule to come here. I'm so glad to keep seeing people who are really engaged now and trying to move and pick on Nathan, trying to make um, the uh, city go forward. Oh, that's wrong. That's Miss Bennett. Hey, oh, Miss Bennett. I just seen an arm coming in. I was like, oh. Uh, trying to make, you know, the city move forward and, and actually with blinders on and focusing on the things that we need to do. I will have Miss uh, Ms. Johnson on this uh, agenda for one thing first, but the other thing we'll, we'll talk about because it's important that everybody on the blocks know what's happening, especially as it relates to Gleba and some of the things that are happening. So we'll move forward. Um, approval of the agenda uh, that, that happens by the president calling for a, uh, a approval of this agenda. And it's usually, of course, the executive board, but not, because this is a whole group, you can't ask for approval of the agenda. Do everybody have one? No. And there's some good information up there for seniors. There's a boat ride coming in August with the princess. There's a lot of stuff going on. Share those with your block club people, your, your neighbors, some more so they can call in or if they want to go. So I'm calling for, uh, Mr. President, can you, um, Call for an approval of the agenda that's an A or an A. Yes, um, I like most. I like to make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Well, first of all, you can't make motions because you are the president. Someone in the audience has to make. Can you call? Can you call for a motion, please. I call for a motion of acceptance of the agenda. I thought. I'm sorry. I'd like to make a motion to accept this on today's agenda. Second. Second. Can y'all write them down? He did that. Madam uh, Secretary, that was a. Uh, uh, Janice White. Janice White White and Ms. Charlene. Second that. Now I'll call for you all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. You and me? You opposed? No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure because I was like, okay, that means you got to call the roll and get a whole people. No, 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 no. Okay, none, uh, no, I should have said any dissent. Okay. All right, so we have none, hearing none, this motion passed to approve this agenda. Um, we're going to move forward with first item on the agenda. Mr. President, can you call for the first item on the agenda? Yes, um, um, the first item on the agenda is forming a block clubs. And um, I'd like to elaborate on the experience I had last weekend. You know, I went around and um, just, you know, I had some flyers made up. And I knew at my block, it's kind of small, so I knew I wouldn't have a big turnout for my block alone, so I decided to try to find two blocks, which is my block, Bearsford, and Winona, the block that's over from me. So I walked from Woodward to John R. to, to Oakland, you know, on each block and pass out flyers. And um, some people I encountered said, well, we tried this before, it didn't work. I said, well, let's try it again. Maybe it will work this time. So um, 
you know, I kept, I, you know, I, I didn't let that uh, discourage me. I kept pushing and pushing, and finally, when the meeting came around, I was sitting in my backyard. One person came out like, "Oh man, this is it." Then two people came. The next thing I know, I had about 10, 11 people in my backyard. You know, I was real impressed. I, I wasn't expecting that amount of people. But it just goes to show there are a lot of people in your neighborhood who care. They just need somebody to kind of like give them a little shove saying, you also care. And when you get more than one person thinking they're the only one that's caring, they're more, you know, they're more likely to join the group than everybody cares. So we talked about things as far as like, you know, beautification of our block. You know, we are, you know, where we are, we address that on group home, the, um, was the, the shelter, the, the oasis, drum, and um, we found out that it, that it is closing down because I have noticed there's not a many, there's not as many people congregating around the corner of their little seasons and things, which is a good thing because you couldn't even buy a pizza up there without getting harassed. So that's definitely a good thing. And, you know, I had to tell some people like the first thing, what are we gonna do? What are you gonna do? I said this is a this is a process. There's nothing that's gonna happen overnight. We just can't run up in you know Madam Madam Mayor's office and say you gotta do this, you gotta do this. You know it takes time and and when you speak in more than one voice, you got people behind you. I think this you'll be heard. So pretty much that's what I have on forming a block club. If you don't have a block club on your block, just say your block is small or whatever. Consider combining one, two, three blocks. I mean, that way we can all try to get organized and, you know, like I say, bring Highland Park, bring Highland Park back one block at a time. And I think if we all work together, we can actually do that because the little time Madam Mayor's been in office, I have seen a change already. Amen. You know, so if she can make a change, and it's been about six months now. So if she can make that type of change in six months, just think what a bunch of us can do. So that's all I have. Um, any questions for anyone? I didn't know you said that. So that Oasis and the Little Teachers is going away for good. Yeah. Are they turning into anything? Or no? As far as I know, I don't know what they're turning into. I know it's on the market for $3.3 billion. Oh, wow. don't buy it. But it's for what avenue. So, you know, at this time, Woodward is booming. How the Park is the only section on Woodward that is really has not been developed. Uh, the way it should be, mm. but well, trust me, there's some things going on. I don't know if you noticed <coughs> around the corner on um, Victor and here that the, a guy is redoing the whole building. Mm. Well, the, I went inside and it is beautiful up there. He has a, a whole loft space, <coughs> apartments up there that he's turned done, and downstairs there is going to be a banquet center downstairs, a small one. Also, a set conference room where anybody want to have meetings and bring in conferences and stuff. And then there's going to be some retail. There's supposed to be a, a restaurant, sit-down restaurant, and a um, barbershop, of course, that's always been there. There's going to be a breakfast place, you know. So he's working on it now. And this is so. This is what people need to see. They just start need to see things happening. And once they start seeing things happening, then they want to make things happen. So I'm going to jump in on, on the um, forming of block clubs. So everybody here already, I know, have a, a form in. Miss Johnson, I don't know if you turned in one for your block, but no one still has. Oh, I think it's Okay. She never brought it. We never received it. Um, so if you get that back to her. We know you have a block club because y'all have the one of the ones that's been around for a long time, but uh, Sherry has not returned. And I, I, I was thinking they, I talked talk to Rodney, he said something about they, they was probably gonna be transitioning it to somebody else maybe. I don't know, I don't know if you all had a meeting or not, but uh, if we can get that form in, uh, there's not much you all have to do, because you all have your block yeah. established for years. So if it's, not, if it's someone in here who has not turned in paperwork, that's the thing to do. We have to get that in so that we, I will come out and knock on doors with you if you want me to, to just talk to people about why and what, you know, what it's about. And so that we can get people engaged. Uh, I will come out to a meeting. If you just put a block, look, put flyers on the door and say we have a meeting on Saturday at 12 o'clock. People show up, somebody gonna show up. 
uh, and have a hot dog or two or something. Can y'all have some beef ribs or some lamb chops? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I need some real food. Listen, Madam Mayor don't get to eat all tonight because I'm always running. My whole diet is thrown off. So uh, thank God for my garden and my backyard where I can go pull off some leaves and eat them uh, in a salad. So, um, but the, that's how you get started. It takes, it's just all about getting up and doing it. Some people are gonna give you, you know, uh, uh, the, the blue, uh, yeah, but it ain't gonna, like you said, it ain't gonna make no difference. Well, it makes a difference when you make the difference. And people have to know that. Um, it doesn't happen overnight, like he says, but it makes the difference when people start seeing you doing the work. If you're putting out flyers and say, hey, today we want you to pick up all the garbage around, around your you know, house. That's one thing. That keeps away the rats, the ro or whatever else is out there. He said a woodchuck, ground hog, woodchuck. I don't know what it is. It's a rodent. And it's big. And I've seen it. And, uh, you know, the deer and the rabbits and everything else we got here, because we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, but if you don't, coyotes. the coyotes and everybody else. But if you can't feed, if they can't eat, they're going to go somewhere else. So if you're having your garbage out with a lot of lid on, they're eating. They're eating and they're growing and they're fat like that woodchuck and anybody else that's out here, anything else. So that's what it is. Uh, I talked about uh, lids for the garbage cans. You know, that's an ordinance, whether people know it or not. And we will make sure that the, um, there's a business flyer that says how to be a friendly neighbor. I think uh, I got to find mine. Debbie, do you have yours? Remember those flyers we bought that say how to be a good neighbor? Yeah. It's a good neighbor. Good neighbor, yeah. And there's some things that's listed on there. And it came from uh, the previous administration, which was, it was a good flyer. And so, you know, we're not going to reinvent the wheel, but it, it definitely, uh, had a lot of information for your neighbors on how to keep your, you know, this is the ordinance. There's no barbecuing on the front lawn and on the front porch. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people still don't understand yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, we're in the firehouse, but that's a fire hazard. Because if flames catch on to these porches, then your whole house will spread or you can spread it somewhere else. So that's the reason there should be no fire, no, no uh, grills on the porch in the front yard, like that. Now, Mary, will you be putting that fire out so we can pass it out? As soon as I find it, I, I don't know if I've got them out, but I'll find it somebody. Uh, I think, I'm gonna try to look for it too. I think Jimmy might have it. I'm, I'm gonna right. say, um, and so is Lisa on? Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah. See if, I'll see if she Lisa has it too, uh, the president of the California Black Club. Yes, ma'am. Question, um, when it comes to the barbecue, when the porch, mm -hmm. you know, that's a ordinance, wouldn't that be something for the ordinance? Uh, yes, but we don't have one on the weekend. Well, and some, some people have one for seven days a week. Are they using them though? So they can't, it, it's on there. You can't cook on your front porch. So in order for us to uh, issue a ticket, it actually has to be cooking on <coughs> There is no barbecuing on your front porch. You know, it doesn't say that you can't store it there. It says you can't cook there. And so once some, and usually people do that on the weekends. So we don't have a weekend or, ordinance person unless they change days and sometimes you will we'll come out on the weekend and not, you know, just pop up. Sort of like people at Wayne County, uh, the food inspectors, when people think they, they're being slick and they they're supposed to have a license to serve food to people yeah, or, you know, cook food and they think the, they don't come out, well, the guy popped up. <laughs> Especially when we had the music festival one time. They they popped up and, and, and they had to shut down. So, just a minute, I see. Uh, so we, we, you know, those are the things that we, you can help us with. Somebody barbecuing on, during the weekday, during the day, you see them, make a phone call. You know, that's, you can't do that. You're not supposed to do that. This is the subtle changes that we can make. You make a phone call to the uh, code enforcement. Or you make a phone call to the police. They call code enforcement. Okay. 
So those are the things. We, we, we have a list with those numbers on it. Remember that flyer that on the back that I had you put up? Mm -hmm. I know we don't have one here, do we? Uh, the chief got one in his office, I think. If you have, can you just copy it before? Thank All right. You. It's numbers on the back. Um, those are the things that, the, the, just the little small changes can change your neighborhood. It, it really, really can with no, no issues. People want to see better. If they start seeing better, they might do better. And I know a lot of us do keep our yard. Thank God for my neighbor, because I swear they, they probably put me off the block, because I'm never there. And my grass grow real fast for some strange reason. So, so um, I uh, had to um, pay somebody. I pay them off. You've been doing it for 11 years since I've been there. Cutting my grass, running back. You know, I take care of the bushes or whatever else, but if it wasn't for him, I probably, my grass would be probably a horrible mess. So, you know, just those things, that's the major thing that he does. He does it for one, two, three, four houses on our side, and our other neighbor do it on the other side for the three houses that's connected right to him. So, you know, we just need to start, and we need to talk the positive things up that you see, hey, we can make this change by one little thing. Won't you try putting tops on your garbage cans so the garbage don't be everywhere? And don't sit bags out on the ground and I don't put my, if I'm only going to take out a bag, I do it that morning, right before the garbage man comes. But because if I put it out there at night, when I go out there the next morning, garbage is going to be everywhere because they're going to tear it up. I do have garbage cans. If I want to put my garbage can out at night, I put it in a can with a lid. Now, I talked about that before with the garbage cans. These, these rodents that eat up the garbage cans. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of squirrels these is, but I've decided I'm going to get the galvanized cans back again and put them up on the roller that you roll out and roll back. Because at this point, buying a garbage can every year that they keep eating up, I, I might as well just invest the money into the those kinds and just put them back out. But um, yeah, those are the small things you can do with your neighbors when you start your block club. Have a beautification day. Uh, Connecticut, we have a cleanup every year on our street. They go and cut all the trees in front of the, even the abandoned houses. They help cut them down in front of the uh, things, you know, stuff like that. So just working together to a, for the improvement of the, um, of the city. That's, that's what it's gonna take. I'm one person. I have one code enforcer. We have one, uh, we only have six DPW workers full time. And uh, right now we do have some uh, summer people, some seasonal, but in October they go away. And uh, so, you know, until we can build from what we have, we can take, even with the police department, our police department is not full. And until we get enough police officers that they can patrol all the time, we have to do what we have to do. So you can be the eyes, just call them. Call the police department. If they don't show up, let me know. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Huh? I want to ask you another question. Um, we were saying last night that the meeting that Davidson belongs to the county? The county, yes. Okay, is there a particular number you call because, like, I don't walk well, but sometimes I like to walk and I like to walk in. Yeah, I know that, 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 that stuff is only wrong. Right. Okay. Let me get you that number before we leave. She had her hand up before you asked that question. So I'm, I'm sorry. Get her. And then at this point, we're going to hold all questions to, towards the end so we can get through the agenda. Okay? Thank you. I know I just want to know you're talking about the um, barbecue because most people start barbecue on the weekend and after six. And if we can't call the police, can we? Look, I've seen a little I mean, it's a violation of an ordinance. They can come out and get a ticket. The police? Yeah. Okay. They can take it. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on because I don't want to start this question and answer and thing until we get down to the end and get through the agenda. I'm sorry that I'm late. No, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Look up some information on lighting that mm -hmm. somebody asked about last time. Okay. Good. Um, let's see. Where are we at? Events. Oh, wait. Are we, are we done, Mr. McGee? Yeah, um, have you, you heard Yeah, that? I've done with the form in the box. Yeah. Um, 
Next item. Next item we have um C D B G no, block you skipped grants. events. You don't skip all the way down to the week. I thought you were doing events when you were talking. Yeah. I didn't say anything about the events. <laughs> <laughs> we, still, yeah. we were still on uh okay. four Next. slot buttons. Okay. Next on the agenda we have um events. Events. Okay, so there. just so you guys know, um again I talked about these uh calendars that we put out every month. You can walk up to City Hall on the, on the uh, counter. As soon as you walk in, there's a calendar of events on that, ca everything that's happening in the city that we are sponsoring during that month that we absolutely know of is on that calendar. You, we are this month coming up July, there's some things going on. We have the uh, for veterans, anybody who's a veteran, we have uh, Adam Ollier, who's over at Veterans of, of Affairs and, and Veterans Department in the state now. He'll be coming, he'll be sending someone down to talk to veterans about the resources that they have, the different things like that we got going on. Uh, so please plan, I think it's on the 14th at the rec center. But let me make clear when she comes back, she'll be able to tell me. Um, those that are kind of, if you have veterans on your street, say, hey, they doing, they getting ready to do this. You need to go up there and get information. You'd be surprised how many veterans don't know their, what benefits, you know, they, they, they qualify for. And there's some that they don't think they qualify for that they do. Uh, some have served and don't even have the medical benefits. Some people might have qualified for a percentage of being, uh, dis you know, as far as, considered disabled where they get funds and 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 if you are get 100 i found this out if you get 100 percent this uh through the military as a disabled you don't have to pay taxes if you have student loans they go away yeah if you have uh, all kind of things that go and go so um please make sure that your vet is uh checking out on all the ben benefits that they have that's in michigan too that's a federal way, so it's across the country. Oh, it is? Okay. I know my, my buddy was a retired Marine. He um, gets in and he's in Virginia. Mm -hmm. and I thought he... Oh, but you have to have 100%. Sometimes they don't give you 100%. They might give you 85%. Right. You might... But until you get 100% disabled, according to the military... Uh, you don't have to pay for tax for your plates and things like that. It's, it's a lot of things. Uh, yeah. Things that you need. That, that and car insurance too that's it um, they get real good discounts yeah. you know different things like that that they qualify for that a lot of people don't realize they qualify for uh there's been some new laws some new changes where people who was discharged maybe because maybe they had um, an injury in the military and they didn't get to serve all the whole term but they served so many months of it and they've done some things now where it depends on how what it is and how long it's been that they can look back and say okay well you do qualify i think anybody that served in the military if they get injured, injured it should be qualified because mm -hmm. you signed up you know you volunteered your services so i believe that's our i'm not i'm not the government and i don't know what to do but that's just my belief and I have to say that because I don't want nobody on saying she said no. Nope. I said I believe that happens. And so um, those are the events of um, Miss Brown. What else? We talked about veterans. Uh, the veterans thing coming up. Don't forget, sit with the chief. It's every month. Last night we had a turnout, and it was turned up, and we had a good time finding out about. Secretary of State information because we had the Deputy Secretary of State last night come out uh, from um, yeah, go go, mm -hmm. Eddie Bay. Mm -hmm. I, think that's what it, I think I said it right. I came out last night to talk about this. We had Kevin Fisher, who's the uh, uh, Executive Director of NAMI Michigan, talk about mental health and and how policing and mental health now is changing and. The, uh, you know, having a, a mental health professional riding with them to uh, stop escalations or diffuse situations, you know. So 
that was good information to know. And we're gonna continue to, Chief is gonna continue to have some things that affect our community uh, and bringing these people in. I am, I'm working closely with the uh, uh, Attorney General's office for their programs. We have, you know, they've had the scams program come in where it, a lot of our seniors are being scammed out of their monies and different things like that. So we've had her come in and talk about that. And then I'm, I'm gonna do some more requests, some more requests of the different people to come in. With that, I wanna make sure that I leave time for Charlene Turner Johnson to talk about uh, some things that they're doing as a group of people in the city. As well, let's talk about nonprofits and how we, we move forward with that. All right, so I, that's it. Any questions for me about uh, uh, events? Because I need you to make sure you watch the calendars. It, sign up for the emails because that she puts them out on there. Everything, everything that month, there's a flyer for it. We don't ran so many flyers. They were looking at us downstairs. People come to put stuff downstairs. There's no room for them because we got flyers for you. Come up there and get it. Take it to your block club. Run it off. Right. Yes. When the when um is it possible to add throughout the month, or is only made at the beginning of the month? The calendars, the uh, events. Most of them they made during the month, and if it's a special event that somebody has in the city, they usually send it to uh, uh, Miss Brown, and then she posts it. Right, because the school board is having an event on July the twenty second. Okay, well, we need that because that's not a city event, but you can send a flyer. And when she gets the flyers, we, we, we have meetings, monthly meetings with uh, right. the superintendent now. And so um, if that flyer could be presented to Ms. Brown, we can get it posted. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? Yeah, Madam, okay. Madam Mayor, you speak of the same calendar that has like dates on it for the rec center for people to like open exercise and things, is that the same calendar? There's yeah, a calendar on that it has the senior information, but no, this is not the rec center one. These are things that the center, um, the senior coordinator, she attaches a page to it that with all of her events, all of the things, and that's something we need to make sure that Sue administration sends, because something's on there from Sue, right? Is it a real, not this month coming up, but? Um, some of the flyers is from Sue. Yeah, some of them. She sends over her flyers for information. Oh. And then we post it, but on the calendar, we're going to have to start asking what you got in this room. The little boxes are so small that if like, she print everything on there, you guys are going to have to use your magnifying glasses <laughs> to see what's, what's going on. But we can make sure that there's flyers and things posted to, that's happening over at the rec center and stuff like that. All right. Um, Did you say if we had things that the block club needed to be printed, we could bring them here? No. That's not what I said. Oh, what did you, did you say? We can get. Did you no, ma'am. That's not what I said. Did you say that? Uh, for those people on Facebook, that's not what I said. <laughs> oh, well, thought I tried. No, you no. tried. <laughs> what I said was that we print out uh, some flyers so you can get them off there and we take them to you a flyer and you can print them out and do oh, them oh, okay. for them. That's. Oh, but we can't have our events added to. The city calendar, because that, that's a different event. But you can send the flyer, and we will post it for you. Because I know you guys are having. We've been we've been posting your uh, African American um, food yeah. tasting thing, mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, we've seen it. And we, it's in August, but we still, when we get it, we just drop it oh, out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, events like that. If you have something going on, I know Moss has an estate sale every year. So if that happens. Get us the flyer so we can drop it on there. Uh, it used to be that uh, East Grand would have their uh, picnic under the tent, and lots, you know, some people go by or things like that. Whatever it is that you have, if you have something special on your street and you want some people to come, um, here. Uh, you know, whatever it is that you have, uh, the uh, Highland Park. Alumni Association, you know, they have events coming up or whatever to put that on there. Uh, whatever it is, the block club, you're having a cleanup and you want people to come over and help you. Invite them. Put it out and invite them. I want you to come get, come help us. You know? Things like that. 
Uh, Ms. Manica works for Wayne Metro. Uh, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Manica works for um, from the first district. My uh, works for Wayne Metro, and they have a lot of events, or they have a lot of flyers and resources. Sometimes she drops them off at the city hall, or if we can get the fake things. So just so you know that there are uh, different things that you can, uh, you know, put post out there on the page that helps us separate. Okay, one more thing, Madam Mayor. Um, I know that um, you say you and our um, Chief Education Office have monthly meetings. Can, is it possible for us to, to um, have to announce our meetings in your, you know, in the um, calendar? You know, because I feel like the city and um, the school district. We can't put one. it on the calendar, but if she sends it to us, we put it on the page, uh, the, the uh, email. What is it? I put it on Facebook. Facebook. We have to and the uh, you know, she can, she can, we got so many things. Like we got YouTube now. We got a YouTube. Uh, yes. Subscribe to YouTube. She's doing a wonderful job of getting us back into the 21st century of, <laughs> <laughs> of technology. So uh, subscribe, and then we are going to have, be able to uh, fix our web website uh, coming up. Okay. And so, you know, different things like that. So. Does a lot. I'm sorry. You know the reason I have the city of Iowa Park for YouTube, but you get you need to subscribe to it and you know just click on the subscribe. The link is on the okay. Facebook page. Okay. Yeah. So until I get so many subscribers, I can't customize the link. So okay. once we hit a hundred subscribers, I'll be able to customize the link where everybody <coughs> can kind of just get right to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just that right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just you know the reason I asked was um. Because the school district goes as the city goes. I mean, you know, for us to have a great school system that we're like we're building now, we, you know, the city goes, we go. We of course it, but the we, the lead. we just don't have it right in yeah. space on those little boxes. And uh, your your website, you guys do a good job of posting your meetings and stuff. And I even saw, I think I saw a, a commercial. Yes, yeah. it was about two o'clock in the morning. No, yeah. it's on at nine o'clock, nine thirty in the morning. Every morning when I wake up, no, which I, I seen it at two, three o'clock. Well, that's good to know. I'm up in the middle of the night, but I, I, I saw yeah. it at the time. So that's good too. That's uh, the barber school has a. Um, yeah, I see it in the mornings about nine o'clock every so morning. Every morning, that's one too. Um, we are. Uh, we're gonna keep moving. <laughs> I'm gonna move on. Uh, Mr. President, can we go on the next? Yes. Um. Where we are now is a um, nonprofit charter, nonprofit Charlene Turner Johnson. Could you um, please let us know what you have? We talk about how to become a nonprofit and what what is the steps that we need to take. Because people have been asking, well, what's the steps that we need to take? Is that for a nonprofit? Uh, I go on. You can, for your well, you can start with the yes. Yes. Actually, thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, President McGee. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Actually, I was asked to talk about the Highland Park United Neighborhood Association mm -hmm. at the very first meeting. Yes. You asked me to look that up. I did. To see if we still had it. We used to have an association of nonprofit organizations, block clubs, actually, called the Highland Park United Neighborhood Association. That was under my son's administration. And I was the volunteer uh, coordinator, if you will. And we formed a nonprofit organization so that all of the black clubs in the city could work together on a citywide project. And the first citywide project we worked on was a cleaning vacant lots and alleys project. And we worked and got all kinds of donations from dump trucks to other big trucks, to the city's DPW folks, tons of volunteers, and block clubs all signed up. All those donations were distributed to the block clubs that signed up. Tons of volunteers, and we all worked on the same day <laughs> to clean up alleys and vacant lots. And we just kept doing it. Every year, we had this citywide cleanup. There are other things that we did as a united group and so that organization is no longer in existence. Oh, no. 
because we didn't continue it after the new administration came into being. But all is not lost because it is very easy, and this is creating a nonprofit, mm -hmm. very easy to create another citywide nonprofit association of black clubs. All we have to do is come up with a name, decide on a purpose statement, get three incorporating officers, president, secretary, treasurer, for example, Complete the form, which is on the uh, website, michigan.gov. We go to michigan.gov. I was looking this all up on my phone just now. <laughs> to make sure I had it right. We go to michigan.gov. We go to licensing and regulatory affairs. And then we go to domestic nonprofit corporation. There's a form there called the Articles of Incorporation. It is very easy to fill out. Like I said, you need a resident agent. That just means a name and an address where the mail will go. You need three incorporating officers. And you need a purpose statement. If you need bylaws, it does ask for some. But I can give you the bylaws that we've had for the Highland Park United Neighborhood Association. Or you can make a bylaw. And you pay a $20 fee. And you submit that to the state, and you get registered as a nonprofit organization. Then the next thing to do is to apply to the IRS to get an EIN number, which is needed to open up a bank account. EIN stands for what? Employer Identification, Employee identification number. number. Right. <laughs> so that's that's all there is to it. Yes, ma'am. Council president, raise your hand for I mean council member. That's okay, ma'am. Yeah. District one. District one. <laughs> District one. Um, I wanted to know for the the address, does it have to be a brick and mortar or can it be a post office box? It can be a post office box. Okay. Doesn't have to be a brick and mortar. All of the uh, rules for filling out the form are right there on the website. So the instructions are right there. It's very, very easy to do. Yes, ma'am, Janet. Yes. It's, when doing this, is this the same type of 501c3 that you usually do with the IRS? No. This is you a 501c3, that's another step. Right. You have to have articles of incorporation. You have to be registered with the state right. as a nonprofit organization. So all of these Once you are registered with the state, and once you get your EIN number, and you get your purpose statement, you figure out your strategic plan, you figure out your budget, you're gonna need all of that information to apply for a 501c3. A 501c3 is a designation that the IRS gives to nonprofit organizations so that you can uh, receive donations, and the people who give donations to you will get a tax right off those donations. Also, it's often needed to get major grants from foundations of 501c3 status. It costs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what it costs now. I paid $850 in 10 years, 11 years ago. Or that's not how somebody do it for you, but it's no, 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 not to do it. I'm talking the about that's the fee. IRS. That's just the fee to right. apply. Yeah. It, it used to be two fees, but one was like 400, 400 and something. 50, and that's yeah, or I did a 501c3. 50,000 and under is 450,000, yeah. what it was. And 50,000 and over, if you plan to collect more than $50,000 a year and over, it was $800 in 2012. Yeah. So I don't know what it is now. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, but you really don't have to have a 501c3 starting out. So you can still get the same type of donations you without can get, the 501c3? You can get donations, but the donor cannot get a tax write off. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. But that's not a problem because you can always use 
another nonprofit as the fiduciary. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that exactly. nonprofit has a 501c3. They agree to accept the donations on your behalf, mm -hmm. and then they just give you the donations, whatever the cash is. The difference between a 501c, I mean a nonprofit, and a 501c3 is just that the person cannot get a write-off. Everything else is about to say A 501c3 is a designation that a nonprofit organization gets. You cannot just be a 501c3. Right, but I'm, uh, but but you said you can also get a designation from the state as a nonprofit. You can. You have to get incorporated. Right. In the state, right, as a nonprofit, yeah, you have to have those. You have to do that first, and then you can apply. I'm saying what I'm saying. Is I've done all this before, but what I'm just trying to see the difference is, you're both nonprofit. There, no, there's there's not a difference in the sense that you cannot be a five hundred one c three without being a nonprofit. Right, exactly. So there is no five hundred one c three. So it's just a step. That's a separate organization. No, a five hundred one c three is a designation. Yeah, it's just the next step of yeah. going up to yeah. making sure that people that want to donate to you, if you want. Yeah. What I was told before, because I started mine, like she said, I started as a nonprofit here in Michigan with my articles <laughs> of incorporation and my three people, four people as my board members, and then I went from there to do that. 35 page book because right. that's what it is it's a lot. and um, take you know do that and then that led me to getting my 501c3 not um, off right away because by the time it took them almost a year and a half to right. get the paperwork uh, approved you but I had to send some things back they'll send back you have mm -hmm. they'll they'll send give you a uh, person that's going to be working on your case mm -hmm. if you don't have everything involved I, I didn't know I was supposed to send my article what you're saying I didn't know I was supposed to send my articles of incorporation with those documents. So I'm driving all the way to, uh, it's a city right outside, outside of Lansing, somewhere out there where you have to go and get that, your articles of incorporation is through Laura, but they, you know, think some places be in Grand Rapids, some places be here, so I forgot what the name of the city was. To get that, get it back and go mail that back to them and other three things that they needed. And then after they have got those things, they approved my 501c3. And like she said, it's the destination. What it is, is a lot of people don't like to give you money if they can't get it right now. Yeah. You are a nonprofit, but the state of Michigan, if you don't have one and you filed your, you know, articles of incorporation and it's been approved. Like she said, it was $20, it might be 25 now. I, I think it is, I just recently got $20. I yeah. recently paid for that with Parker Pride. Okay, so once you do that and you get that and you do all the things that you're supposed to do, you're still a nonprofit, but if you want someone to give you money that they want to be able to write off, you have to have a 501c3 for that. That's what I was trying that's to say. That's, that's how that works. The most block clubs, they usually start off as a nonprofit, but they end up being a 501c3 because they want grants. And that's the other thing. Most things. You can't, you know, to apply for grants, yeah. most of them require that you are a, a not uh, a charitable organization from the, through the IRS and not a 501c3. Yeah, but there, there are a lot of requirements in terms of reporting when you become a 501c3. Mm -hmm. So it's not an easy, you know, thing. Oh, yeah, and then you have it's, to do reporting every year. You have to do a lot of reporting to the IRS. Mm -hmm. You have to do it well. As a nonprofit, you have to do an annual report to the state of Michigan. That's not such a big deal. But there are other requirements, and they're all on the website. So the thing to do if you want to incorporate as a citywide group of nonprofits, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, a citywide group of black clubs, the thing to do is to go to the website, look at the incorporating documents, read the instructions, then come together and come up with the answers. I don't know if there's a purpose statement yet for the group. There has to be a, a purpose statement that we all agree to. And I don't know if we have officers beyond the president. Yeah, secretary. Okay, we have a secretary. Do we have, we have a, a vice president. Okay, that's good. We got three officers, so we're good in that regard. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. Yes.
Ms. Johnson, so can we make a motion that we uh, establish this um, committee again? You mean establish the, yeah, non the nonprofit business association again? Nonprofit black uh -huh. association. Yes. <laughs> black <-up. laughs> yes, can we reestablish this today? Uh, I'll ask the uh, president. Mr. President, president, can we reestablish the <laughs> Black Club Association citywide? citywide. Yeah, city black club association. Hey, we just gonna have to come up with a name, that's different. That's too long. Yeah, well, it's the same here with United. United. You call it whatever, citywide black club association, that's the that's name. It used to be Highland Park United Neighborhood Association. That's what it was. Highland Park, we should call it Highland Park, Highland Park citywide black club association. Whatever you guys come up with. You gotta have a name. So if we have our, if we are incorporated already, we wouldn't apply for the citywide, correct? You mean as a black club? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's a black because club. that's a different organization. As that's a black club, you are then joining a citywide nonprofit organization. So yes, yes. Every black club, whether it's incorporated or not, should be asked to join the citywide association of black clubs. Because the citywide is is the it's usually the people who run your block club, like you're the president. So usually those members are the people who are a part of the citywide. You take your information back, you take everything back to your block club and talk to them about it at your meeting. Mm -hmm. This is a different organization than you. You are a part, but your your organization is the Eason Two Three. Black club and you already incorporated. So now we're about to incorporate all of the black clubs together and have it under one roof as a name, Highland Park Citywide Black Club Association. I keep saying that because I kind of like that name. Uh, and the acronym, I got to look and see what it says. It might be HB Bab or something. I don't know what it says. But um, then that way your black club is a part of the citywide. Yeah, and part of your bylaws could be that. Every black club would send a representative to a monthly meeting of the citywide association. Just like this meeting here where you come as representatives of your black club and then you go back to your black club and you share the information, you share the plans, you get people engaged on whatever project you're gonna be working on. So if the project is gonna be a citywide cleanup, you know, you come, you as a group, we as a group plan it, and then we go back to our black clubs and we get our neighbors involved in it and on the day of implementation everybody is working on it all together across the city and it's easier I think we were very successful in getting tons of donations for citywide cleanups and tons of volunteers even beyond our neighbors from the corporations around here that's great uh, just huge turnouts for all of the citywide cleanups it makes it better when it's citywide. It, it, it does, it really does. And you can do big you know, posters, you can do uh, flyers, you can get funds. Even when you're not a 501c3, there are people who will donate for these events because they get publicity, you know. They get what they need in terms of the publicity for giving back to the community. So that's that. And we will make sure next week that we come up with, come back with a name, not next week, but next month. Come back with a name that you highlight, like, how to park block up. In case you think of something that the um, mayor said that she likes how to, how to park uh, citywide block club association. Mm -hmm. I, I like it. What is those acronyms? It's a A P C W B A. No, citywide is one, one, one word. We're going to make it one word? Yeah. Yeah. CBC at the end, and then ACBA, CBCA. Yeah. And think about a purpose statement. What would be the purpose of the Association of Black Clubs? Because that has to go in the articles of incorporation to unite the city. Right. That idea that you come up with. And you may want to have a small group to work on that. And to advance. Yeah, a small group to work on the purpose statement. Yeah. So the these are some homework pieces for next month that you all to come back with and bring a person. Go, go to the next block over and say, hey, you really need to come out. And, uh, just, I, 
think the, the again we still don't have the middle of uh, the city from Ford back down to um, Monterey is here and Richmond is here. So then you skip over those two. We don't have Tennyson. I mean Tuxedo and Amherst. Yeah, Richmond is there. Richmond both two people from Richmond. Um, so I would just offer one other resource as it relates to the nonprofit. I used to be the director of the Michigan Nonprofit Association in Detroit office. The Michigan Nonprofit Association is a trade association for nonprofits in the state of Michigan. So we have tons of members who are in that association. On the website is information about nonprofit organizations, how to form them. What are all the requirements for them? All kinds of trainings for nonprofit organizations. There is a Detroit office. Still, I believe the main office is in Lansing. Uh, but it's a great resource for you. Michigan Nonprofit Association. And we did we did trainings. We have lots of groups formed grow. Uh, we did advocacy around issues that nonprofits were involved in. We did, and we still do, technical support. So if you need to know how to do all the new technology stuff, there's a whole technical support team. So it's a great resource. Michigan Nonprofit Association. Beautiful, beautiful website. So the other thing I was asked to do, this is the last thing, mm -hmm. right? is to share what the Highland Park water advocates are doing. So we have Gracie here, who I guess is the founder. Well, <laughs> Gracie. Maureen. Gracie. Maureen and, or, or, oh, you mean Marion. This is yeah. a different group. OK, yeah. Gracie, no. Janet are members of the steering committee. I'm on the steering committee. Uh, who else? Marion. Yeah, Mary Linda and Wheeler, Lisa. Uh, Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a young adult lady who's joined Eugenia. us. Eugenia. Eugenia. Uh, and uh, Miss Hoy. Diane yeah, Hoy. Diane Hoy and her daughter, they joined us. So what we've been doing is organizing protests, organizing petitions to request that the governor pay the debt that the Great Lakes Water Authority alleges <laughs> Highland Park owes. That 24 million. And this petition is here in my hand. And so I have come tonight to ask those who have not signed the petition to sign the petition. So the petition asks for the governor to pay the 24 million. It asks for the state to provide funds so that Highland Park can repair or rebuild this water plant. And it asks for the Great Lakes Water Authority to give us a fair rate for processing our sewage. There's a history behind all of this. It goes all the way back to 2009 when the governor appointed a state uh, emergency manager who changed a contract that the city had with Detroit, bumped up the rates for sewage, and over all of these years, this debt has been accumulating, and we don't know exactly how it's been accumulating. So uh, it was about six of us mm -hmm. went to the Great Lakes Water <laughs> Authority board via Zoom. That was on Wednesday. Yesterday would be yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> Excuse me, my voice. I had COVID and it affected my voice. <clears throat> so sometimes I get to talking and my voice just goes whack. But anyway, at the meeting, we made statements to the effect that I was watching. we, as residents of Highland Park, want the Great Lakes Water Authority to come to Highland Park yes, we did. and explain to us how they are assessing these charges that we have been built over all of these years, and we don't know anything about it. And I, I praise God for the fact that <laughs> Griffin Hendricks is the board chair. 
Brenda was on my board when I was president of the Michigan Neighborhood Partnership. Brenda spoke up. Brenda <laughs> <laughs> said, this is something that they have never done before. Come to Highland Park and meet with residents and talk about these issues related to this debt. And other board members agree. I know. They normally do not entertain comments yes. from the public. That's right. That's Linda what Wheeler say. said that she has been going to these board meetings at least two years. Yes. Making <laughs> comments. They never entertain the comment. They never no, responded no, to the bad. comment. Yesterday, the board of the Great Lakes Water Authority agreed that they would come to Highland Park yes. and meet with the residents. We, we can ask days. questions and that they would use layman's terms. <laughs> they would use layman's terms to put on their website a description of how they are charging all 112 communities. And to, they say, we don't know, but they say that the charges are equitably yes. applied across all 112 communities. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was an amazing moment myself. Mm -hmm. I thought it was an amazing moment. I praise God for it because God did it. We didn't, we didn't expect it. Yeah. We did not expect to be, you know, heard. We didn't expect that our comments would have any impact because Linda said she had been coming for two years and nothing. Nothing. Oh, God. So, so the other thing is, this wonderful group of residents is planning to go to Lansing. Uh, I was supposed to check with Representative McBall's office, which I needed to see if he will be in Lansing on July 18th. I haven't heard back from that office yet, but I can share this with our mayor. She's got it on her calendar. All of us that are on the steering committee have assignments to go and recruit people to go to Lansing on this bus trip. My assignment was to come here tonight and ask our block club representatives if you would like to go on the bus trip to Lansing to rally in front of the Capitol about the issue of water and Highland Park. The budget was passed. I read in the newspaper. Yeah. The budget was passed. So prayerfully, our 25 million is in there. But we learned in listening to Cleva at the meeting yesterday that there's another, what is it, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 million? 34 million. 34 million that Cleva alleges Highland Park owes to them. So we have to continue to be advocates. We have to continue to be activists. We have to continue to make our voices heard to let Cleva know that we're just not going to sit back and let this happen to us without at least questioning them, you know? At least show us some proof. How do you pay a bill and you never get a bill? We get water bills, right? It says right on the water bill, all the information that we need. We don't get bills about all this $24 million? Right. And we're supposed to pay it? I'm, you know, I'm saying. It was very exciting. I thought the way they allowed us to continue. I thought that was very exciting. Yeah, I thought. I thought At the very beginning, too. At the very beginning of the meeting. It was, I thought it was a breakthrough. Yeah. A major so, breakthrough. So, so this, uh, see, and, 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 you know, and we have to thank uh, Charlene for the ask. Yes. To come to Highland Park. You know, because we had talked about that in the meeting, but we had, I mean, I had gotten about that issue. <laughs> well, you know, I've been a nonprofit uh, leader for 40 years. I'm used to asking. I will ask. I think it's a blessing for people to give. So I ask people to give. You guys might want to add something to what I said. But I will pass the <coughs> sign-up sheet around. If you want to go on a bus trip, we're looking to have a good time. It's free. Free, free food. It's free, free. <laughs> Numbers are going to matter, so if you can't make it. We're, we're looking at July 18th, but we got to get a confirmation from Representative McFall's office. I said I called. I haven't gotten a call back yet, but hopefully that will be confirmed. 
particular sponsors for Long Life. So you can go to the website, DTE website, and just scroll down and you can uh, find out the information. But I did. And uh, if you want to look at it, it'll be right here. I don't have a copy of it, but I can make copies for the next time or I can get copies. I, I don't remember who asked about it. I know it was a conversation about unified lights. Uh, also, Ms. Manica has something really quick. Yes. You have something? Uh, Council Hi, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. It's evening. If you like me, you've been up a long time. So I do talk and I want to give you some energy. Right? So, good evening. I am here to actually, we were talking about nonprofits, we were talking about resources. And so, again, we have Wayne Metro, one of the biggest nonprofit or action agencies that is doing major things across the state. Okay, definitely in Wayne County and they're moving. And so I know sometimes you may say, hey, I'm not, I didn't get something or it didn't help. And I'm here to find out, and we don't have to, if you wanna just write it down and give it to me, some things you would like to see Wayne Metro offer Highland Park residents. Okay, some of it comes from, and it takes a little bit of explaining, so I won't do that exactly today, how that comes about, how they, you know, help you or the funding come about, but as a city, we have to as well come up with some ways that they can assist us, because they don't know until we tell them what we're missing, what we need, correct? We know about water, so they have been helping the best they can with our situation of water. So they have community assistance days with lately, um, one each month with one of our religious leaders in their facility. So we've had one at um, Minister Cooper, which is New Mount Mariah Baptist, I always say Baptist, is it Baptist? Or just New Mount Mariah Church, which is right there in Buena Vista. We've had one at Soul Harvest. The next one is, is in July coming up at Faith Tabernacle, and then again back at New Mount Moriah. Those are community assistance days. Now, they handle a lot of people. So sometimes you may go and get processed, but you won't know for a few weeks. But as long as you are pending or you've given all your information, so that also means you have to check your email, you have to check your spam, you have to check your text messages because they're they've sent it they're sending it out all kind of ways. They also will send another message out through the Connect Center that they have saying, "Hey, come come get some water assistance." Right now, Cortland is a walk-in center. Okay, you can walk in and, and lately because I know that bills went out, right? And so also the water department, Wayne Metro, and the city has been working to make sure you get a flyer, hopefully everybody got a flyer in their bill saying about those community assistance days. But if you don't go, can't say they didn't help you. Also, we have people, if you go into the water company and you have a huge bill and you say I'm having trouble, they're going to give you a flyer to come to Wayne Metro. You, you don't have to go far. It's right here in Cortland. You come in, you walk in, and they will service you. Now, will they tell you yes on that day? Probably not. But they, they do the information for you, they service you, and then you find out later whether or not you have. And so if you have a bill or you have a, a letter that's already saying that you have or you've been approved, you can take that letter to the water company and say, hey, you know, look, they're helping me. I've been approved, okay? So I just wanted to make sure that I got a chance to come up and, and kind of mention that. So again, in July, there's another one coming up um, again, and that's at Faith Tabernacle. On another day, um, I'm gonna try to make sure I remember to get on the agenda, um, but there's so many things that you can get through there, okay? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because if you're on the agenda, you get more than that. <laughs> well, I could have raised my hand five times. Or, uh, well, you know, we have to go to <laughs> before, oh, you know, before we leave. You know, okay. so, just do three things. 
The water. Wait, two, or three things. Yeah, three things. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, she was talking about the system. And a lot Can of we people, do three things in less yeah, than three minutes? Three, yeah. less, hey, wait, less than three minutes. The water department, she is. you know, because of the negotiation with the uh, Highland Park Human Rights Coalition when there was a lawsuit, they work out a payment plan for you if you need help. Um, and there's, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a link on their website about that and uh, all you have to do is ask you will while you're working out this plan with them they will not shut your water off you know and it's a real detailed plan that helps the citizens but a lot of people in Highland Park don't even know it about it uh, two at our um, festival I forgot to mention this to you because I was one of the blocks I told me to mention you know we are having a festival on Easton Street it's August 20, which is a Sunday. You know, uh, it's going to be a nice day. If you have uh, vendors, or if you yourself are a vendor, uh, you can uh, get in touch with us, and you can ask me for a flyer, because I didn't bring a whole lot of them, because I thought the meeting was 7 o'clock and not 6. <laughs> so, uh, but if you, uh, you can uh, sign up as a vendor, they're going to be food trucks. Vendors are $25, food trucks, 50 Uh People, of course, who live on Eason, you know, they can set up a table or whatever, no charge. Um, I have invited some resources, because I did get in touch with uh, Wayne uh, Metro, and they couldn't come because uh, the 20th is a Sunday, but they have told me that they will, you know, they have some material that they're gonna live, deliver to the Portland office on the 14th, so that, you know, I could pick it up and have a table and I distribute that information for them. One minute left. Okay, and uh, <laughs> if you know of a community group, particularly uh, related to lead, I have invited one, but I don't know if they haven't made a commitment yet. But you know, we still have problems with lead in the city, so we need to, you know, if you know of a group that would be available to come on a Sunday uh, for that particular program, just let me know. What was the program? I'm sorry, what was the program? Uh, the festival Man. that we're having on. No, no, no. What did you want them to come from? Oh, to, to, uh, to give the community information about that. I said, Wayne Metro, if they, they're delivering these stuff to me to distribute because they said they can't come because it's a Sunday. Right. Yeah. What date is that? Uh, August 20th. Okay, all right, all right. So I'm going to give you your client. Uh, you're, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> okay. I, this might be scheduled into anything, but my job, I wanted to give the Black Club members some. Okay, we got some gifts oh, there. Oh, okay, okay. anybody? Yeah. Black Club, we yeah. can some gifts. Yeah, yeah. What VHS. Black, what what street, street is this? this? this okay, I'm, from, I'm new. I'm from Grove Street. Um, Grove? Yeah! Yay! Yay. Yeah. 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 Right now, I work with AmeriCorps. We have a few resources there. They work primarily with Detroit. But what they are working with with Highland Park is water filtration for the lead issue. Yeah, home. right. So I'm going to see if I can ask about that. Okay. They, it's big in Detroit. I don't know about Highland Park yet because they're like, oh, we need to Highland Park. Okay. Okay. I did. Yeah, so I okay. emailed them. Just so they wanted to let you guys know that it's free for everyone. Um, it's in Black Park. Park. Yeah, okay. you get eligible for that picture or um, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, they went door to door. Yeah. 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 Yeah.